Center for Entrepreneurship. We're there to serve you and the rest of the campus. So if you have a business idea that you need help developing, let us know. Today we have a, uh, a splendid, you're going to love this presentation. Keith Taylor Richard brings enthusiasm and knowledge and education to uh, the entrepreneur program here at BYU. He is the owner of Taylor Boats, uh, which is located in Utah, but it's viewed nationally as one of the finest boat dealerships in the United States. And you'll quickly learn why. He was uh, born and raised in Salt Lake City. He graduated from Skyline High School. He served his mission in Taiwan and attended Brigham Young University. He uh, founded Taylor Boats in 1991. They're a full service a marine company. They store, they repair, they sell, they anything you can do with a small watercraft. I don't know, do you teach people how to ski? Once occasionally. occasionally. Yeah. 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 If you spend enough money for a boat, they'll take you out for you. <laughs> there you go. <coughs> we uh, we delight in having you come almost every semester to make a presentation. Let's give Taylor a warm BYU welcome. Thank you. I'm really grateful for the opportunity to be here and to give you a little bit of fill for my business. I'm gonna I'm gonna play a short video clip. Hope you enjoy this. Let's see, I think you just need to start it right back at the beginning. Keep going. Thank you. Okay. To give you an even to give you an even better feel for my company, if you'll in an orderly fashion exit the building. I have buses out front. We're gonna go to Utah Lake where I have boats waiting. No, just kidding. Just kidding. Wouldn't that be fun though? Doesn't that make you want to go to the lake? Where's all my water skiers and wakeboarders? All right, got a lot of them in this class. That's a good thing. I'm among friends then. So, so I'm Taylor Richards, owner and founder of, of Taylor's Boats. I, I, am, I am thrilled to be here today, and I'm, I'm also very humbled to be here. I, I love the opportunity to come to BYU. This is the greatest university in the world, and, and you are so fortunate and so lucky to be here. The opportunities that are available to you while you're here are are so rich and so deep and, and so many. And, and boy, if there's one thing I would really encourage you to do, while you're here, take advantage of everything that's available to you. Don't waste a minute of your experience at BYU. Don't let anything get in the way to distract you from your education and from, and from all the great things that are available to you. The Center for Entrepreneurship is awesome. Any of you thinking about a business, there's great people, mentors, all kinds of people that are willing to help you. So really enjoy the experience that you have here at BYU. I'm grateful for the opportunity that I had to be here at BYU, and I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity that I have to come here and, and, and to share my story with you. Um, first of all, um, I, I, I'd like to maybe um, give you my official disclaimer. How many of you have seen the Verizon cell phone commercial where the guy's on the phone, and, and you look behind him, and there's hundreds of people and they're in helicopters and hanging from ropes, and they're all there to help this guy. And he says, that's the network. And, and it's everybody there to support the guy on the cell phone. Have you seen that commercial? Okay, I'm, I'm Taylor Richards representing Taylor's Boats, but, but I'm only a very, very small part, and I can take very little credit for the success of what Taylor's Boats is today. B behind me, there are hundreds of people who have helped me get to where I am. My, my, my family, my wife's family, uh, my, my, certainly my wife and my, my children, uh, friends and business partners of various kinds, and, and people who have worked for me and still work for me, they're, I, I owe them a real debt of gratitude, and, and, and they're, the, they're the real success story behind my story today, and I'm grateful for all those people who have done so much for me. Um, let, let me get to know some of you. Um, ha, anybody here from Alpine? Okay, awesome couple. That, that's where I live with my five kids. And while I'm at it, let me in introduce my son, Spencer. Spencer, stand up. Th this is my son, Spencer, who I am very, very proud of. He's nothing like his dad. He takes after his mom. He's smart. He's good-looking. He's a hard worker. And, 
and uh, he, he's a great kid, and he decided to, to come, come join me today, and fortunately, he'll, hopefully, he'll, he'll be going to school here one day. And Spence, this is where you want to hang out, because this is where all the smart, cute girls are, right? Okay. Um, anybody, anybody from Salt Lake? A anybody Skyline? Olympus? It's where my wife went. Okay, a lot of Titans in the room. That's okay. Eagles rule, but Titans are okay. Um, how about anybody from Lone Peak? It's where Spence goes. It's where my kids go. Lone Peak? Okay, awesome. Awesome. Um, how many of you, this is your first semester at BYU? Awesome. Welcome. Welcome to BYU. What a great experience that awaits you. Um, how, many, how many international students do we have? Any international students? Where are you from? Canada? India? India? Anywhere else? England. England? What part? Manchester. Awesome. My parents were the mission presidents there. Yeah, years ago. They love Manchester. Anyone else? International. Okay. What about uh, freshmen? Freshmen. Okay. Sophomores. Juniors. Seem to have a lot more juniors in, the, in these series. Uh, seniors. All right, we're almost done. Yeah, cool. How about grad students? Anybody? Okay. All right. Well, cool. Um, how about anybody just get home from a mission? Just got home from a mission. Awesome. Cool. How about anybody just got married? Just got married. Okay, congratulations. How about anybody who's single? Yeah. Okay, leave your hands up. Everybody look around the room. You can exchange <laughs> phone numbers after. Okay. All right. Um, my purpose today is, and what I hope to accomplish, is I hope to inspire you to dream big. Dream huge. I, I, I hope that when you're done, you'll look and you'll say, man, if he can do it, so can I. And, 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 you'll, and you'll set your goals, whatever it is, whether it's academics, musical, athletic, uh, business, whatever it is, family. You can accomplish great things, and, and you can do things that you might think are impossible. And, and so set big goals, set big dreams, and, and work towards those, and do something great. It, if you were to look in the dictionary under Taylor Richards, and I'm in there, all you've got to do is go through the dictionary, I'm there. It, it'll, the definition is kind of plain, ordinary, nothing really special, no, no, no big deal. That, that's really the kind of person I am. I'm just an ordinary person. In fact, if I tried to get into BYU today, yeah, that ain't going to happen. So, so everybody in this room is more talented, smarter, and more capable and able th than I am. So if I can do it, so can you. And, and I want to share with you my story about the things that, that, uh, that, I, that I accomplished. Um, well, <laughs> just one other thing really funny. I, I, I thought it was really funny. So I was invited at the end of last year to come and join a, a group of those who, who put on the business plan competition. It was kind of their year-end event, and they were having dinner. So I'm sitting around the table, and I'm getting to know everybody at the dinner. And there's guys like Niall Hatch there who you'll all get to know, and really smart people with MBAs and PhDs and doctorates, and they're talking about their vast experience of business. And, 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 and I'm sitting there going, okay, what can I add to this conversation? And and, and I couldn't think of anything, and the only thing I thought I could say was, dude, you ought to see my new wakeboard. I'm so excited to ride it this summer. You know, that was about as good as it got for me. So anyway, let me tell you a little bit about Taylor's Boats. Taylor's Boats is a full-service marine dealership. Our business model is very similar to the automotive industry with sales, parts, accessories, service. Although our business model is very similar to the, to the automotive industry, we like to keep our culture very different than the automotive industry. The marine industry is a really fun, uh, really fun, fun business. Um, this is our new building. We built about a year and a half ago. We moved into a year ago in December. Uh, how many of you know where IKEA is uh, as you're going up the freeway? Okay, we are just on your way to IKEA, right off the right off the freeway and and Bangor. <clears throat> we carry three boat lines. We carry Cobalt boats and crown line boats. Now, if I could give you a reference point as to what that means, Cobalt is the benchmark of the marine industry. They are the highest quality boat out there and have been for years. And that's like being the Lexus dealer. So we're a very high line dealership. Crown line is, would be something similar uh, to, um, to Acura, another, another really good quality, quality car. That's kind of how crown line is. And then Malibu, which, are the, which is the, um, the, the boats you saw in the clip, they're a little more performance oriented, wakeboard, water skiing. And uh, 
they're probably the funnest and the most exciting. That's kind of like being a portion of BMW dealership. And, and they're a great product. We're very fortunate to have all those boat lines. Um, we have a service department. We have a parts department. We have a pro shop where we sell all the water skis, wakeboards, and all the fun stuff. Um, <clears throat> we have 15 full-time uh, year-round employees, and that, that basically doubles in the summer. We hire a lot of seasonal people. We love to hire college students, and so anybody looking for a job next summer, give us a call, and uh, we'd, we'd love to have you come talk to us. Um, we're probably considered an average-sized boat dealership in comparison to other boat dealerships in the, in the state of Utah, where we're a little more on the high line and a little more expensive. We're, you, you know, we're not more, uh, we're not, we don't sell numbers in mass, but, but we do sell really quality and expensive stuff. It's a really fun end of the industry to be in when you're selling really high quality and good performance product. The service that also comes from the manufacturer is exceptional. So it's, it's a fun part of the business to be in. A lot funner than dealing in a, a cheaper product that, that brings a lot more headaches. Um, years ago I was sitting in, in the same place as you were and, and I had a dream and I had a goal. And, and it's been a lot of years, but it's now a reality. And again, if I can do it, so can you. Um, as we talk today, you might start thinking, okay, am I in the right class? This is, is this a business class or is this a religion class? Um, is, is this a devotional or, or a fireside? Well, I'm going to share with you my own story in my own way according to my own beliefs. And one of the things that I absolutely believe is that not only should you be leave, living your life by gospel principles, but you also should run a business on sound business principles and on sound gospel principles. And I'm going to explain a lot to you uh, what, I, what I mean by that. So anyway, this is probably going to sound a little more like a fireside than anything else. Um, I want to talk to you about the concepts of, of, of creating and building a business. The first thing I want to talk to you about is I want to talk to you about faith as another business principle. In the concept planning and startup phase of a company, I want to talk to you about dreaming huge, dreaming big, and I want to share my dream with you. In the growth and maturity aspect of business, I want to talk about trials and challenges. Those are experiences that, that you'll have, and there are really tough times in being a business owner. And I want to share some of my experiences there with you. And then on the capital and the financial aspect of a business, I want to share with you my feelings about debt and the chains and bondage that come with, with debt. Um, and uh, so anyway... Let me start. Let me start. Let me start with uh, with faith as another business principle. I have I've read all the good business books out there. You name it, I've probably read it. And there's some great business books out there. I've read the E Myth, which is your which is your the book you're reading. That's a great book. I've probably read it actually three or four times. I have it on my on my iPod, and I and I listen to it when I'm on an airplane. And it's a great book. Um, I've read Built to Last, Good to Great, Jack Welch's books on winning and from the gut. And I, I mean, I've read a lot of business books. My favorite business book is the Book of Mormon. Now you're sitting there going, okay, this guy's kind of out there. This is my favorite business book. I've learned more out of this book about business than any book I've ever read. Specifically, my favorite parts of business in the Book of Mormon are first, are first and second Nephi. I think Nephi was the ultimate entrepreneur. <laughs> you're going, whoo, he's way out there. Okay, let's talk about that for a minute. Let's talk about Nephi as the ultimate entrepreneur. Okay, what did Nephi do that makes him an entrepreneur? What, what did Nephi do? Manufacturing. He built a boat. No wonder I like him so much. He built a boat. You know, he's a boat builder. What else did he manufacture? Swords, weapons. He was a defense contractor, right? I mean, he had to organize a lot of people and build a lot of weapons. That's, that's, a, that's a real entrepreneurial undertaking. That's impressive. What else do you manufacture? Temple. Okay, construction business. Yeah, he built a temple and he built cities. Okay, talk about real estate development. Hey, here's the promised land. That's a serious real estate development. Okay, what else? Sell the ocean. He had a cruise line. Okay, now, Nephi was a, I, I really believe Nephi was a great entrepreneur. That doesn't mean he was without his failures. I think one of Nephi's failures was making Layman and Lemuel the cruise directors over entertainment. The dancing and the singing, that was a little inappropriate. So I think what I would have done if I was Nephi, 
I, right out of Jerusalem, I'd have probably fired Laman and Lemuel. I sh- you're fired. Go back to Jerusalem. So anyway, challenging. You know, any of you in a family business? Okay, you can learn a lot from Nephi and his family, can't you? Okay, anything else? Nephi did. Yeah, great leader. And talk about a salesman. To talk Ishmael and his family into leaving and going into the wilderness, and then all those girls to marry him, that's some salesmanship. That's impressive. Yeah, yeah. Faced with real challenges. How am I going to put food on the table? And he figured out how to do it. Okay? Good impersonator? Yeah, he was, wasn't he? Wasn't he? Yeah. Military, you know, protecting the people. So Nephi was a great entrepreneur. And I really believe that we can, we can learn a lot. Now, I want to make you a promise. And I want to tell you my own personal story and my own personal beliefs. Heavenly Father loves you. And he knows you. He knows you intimately. And he wants you to succeed. He wants you to prosper. He wants to help you with your goals and your dreams and everything you aspire to do. He wants to, ha- he wants to help you cr- accomplish great things. And, and, and how do I know that? Well, let, let's, go to, let's go to Mosiah really quick. Um, if you have your scriptures, great. If not, it's not required reading for this class, although I would highly recommend it. Um, Mosiah chapter 4, verse 19. It says, Behold, are we not all beggars? Do we not all depend on the same being, even God, for all the substance we have, for both food and remnant, and for gold, and for silver, and for all the riches which we have of every kind? You know, there's a reason why the Lord wiped out our memory when he sent us here. There's a reason why he cursed the earth. So it would be hard. And let's face it, it's really hard. There's a reason why he commanded us to work hard all the days of our life. There's a reason why. Why do you think that reason is? Okay? To learn faith and dependence on the Lord. And I'm here to promise you that if you will rely on the Lord in everything you do, whether it's being a father, being a mother, being a business person, starting your own business, athletics, musical, whatever it is, I promise you that the Lord will help you make more of your life and help you accomplish greater things than you could ever imagine doing by yourself. And he will help you accomplish great things. Now, now just one other part of the scriptures. Um, in, in Nephi, when Nephi, and I'm, I'm not going to take time to go to that because I've got a lot of things I want to tell you. The Lord commands Nephi to build a boat. Nephi has absolutely no idea how to build a boat. And as an entrepreneur, you're going to face challenges where you're going to have absolutely no idea what to do. But Nephi prayed off. And he went to the mountain off, which we know the Lord uses as temples. And the Lord showed him great things. And Nephi was able to build a boat. And when the boat was done, not only did it, it took him to the promised land. That's got to be a pretty good boat. And when they stood back and they looked at the boat, they said, It is exceedingly fine. And Nephi was not directed to build the boat after the manner of men, but after the way the Lord showed him. And I believe that the Lord can show you how to do things in your life that when you look back on your life, you'll say, I was able to do great things. And you will. Um, Moving along. Let me talk to you about the concept, planning and startup of of a company and what my experience was. I, when, I was, when, I was in your, when I was in your place, I, uh, I started to really struggle. My first couple of years at BYU, I absolutely loved. I had a great time. It was awesome. I was learning. It was just, it was great. And, and I found myself married. And that was great. And, and then I, don't get me wrong, that was great. And, and even better than that, I found, we, we found ourselves expecting a child, and that was awesome. But I started to feel the financial pressure just weighing down on me. And, and I started to really struggle in school because I wasn't finding the one thing that I wanted to do. I wasn't finding my direction, my path. I wasn't finding that thing I was going to have to do the rest of my life. And, and I was reading in my scriptures, and, and uh, one, one of the scriptures I want to share with you is in, is in 1 Nephi. And it's, when, it's in chapter 15, and it's when Nephi, is, is te- Nephi and Lehi are teaching his brothers Laban and Lemuel. And they teach them a lot of important things. And the brothers come to Nephi and they say, we don't get this, this is a little hard for us to understand. And Nephi says, and I said unto them, 
Have ye inquired of the Lord? And they said unto me, We have not, for the Lord maketh no such things known unto us. And Nephi said to him, jumping down to 11, Do ye not remember the things which the Lord hath said? If you will not harden your hearts and ask me in faith, believing that ye shall receive with diligence in keeping my commandments, surely these things shall be made known unto you. I thought that's what I need to do. I need to inquire of the Lord. I need to get the Lord involved in this so that I can figure out what I'm supposed to do with the rest of my life. How am I going to provide for my family? And so I made it a purpose of fasting and prayer and, and temple attendance to ask the Lord's help in directing me. And my prayers were answered. My wife grew up in a boating family. I didn't. And, but I loved boating. It was my favorite thing to do. In fact, no, no lie, true story, I had some neighbors that bought a boat. And every time they'd start loading up the boat to go to the lake, I'd run over there and I'd help them start loading up the boat, right? Hoping that they'd invite me to come with them. And most of the times they'd say, hey, Taylor, do you want to go boating with us? Yeah, thanks. They, they were an awesome family and they're still one of my great customers today. And uh, every time I see them, I tell them, you know, it's your fault I'm in this business. And uh, any, anyway, so I just, I absolutely loved going boating. And, and one weekend, my wife and I, we borrowed my father-in-law's boat. And it was kind of a hammered boat. So I thought, well, I'll, I'll fix it up a little for him. It was really nice of him to let us take it. So I went down here to Orem up on State Street. There was a boat dealership. And uh, I went in that boat dealership to get some parts so I could fix this boat up. And I'll never forget opening the doors to that boat dealership. And I saw all those cool boats and all those water skis. And I thought, you mean people make money doing this? This is awesome. I could do this for the rest of my life and love going to work every single day. And so right there and then, I decided I was going to get in the boat business. I was going to build the best boat leadership in the state of Utah. I was going to carry the best boats in the industry and make a ton of money. This is going to be great. This is just going to be awesome. And, and so I decided to go down to that dealership and, and get a job. So I, I went down there and, and, and I went to the owner and I said, I really want to get in the boat business. Why don't you give me a job selling boats? And he said, well, I, you know, I'd like to, but right now it's that time of year where we're just not hiring. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. I've got to, got to get this guy to hire me. Well, I'd really like to work in the boat business. And he said, well, I'm, I'm just not hiring right now. And so I kind of left, and I was kind of discouraged, and I thought, okay. I went about this all wrong. So I went home. I put on a suit, put on a tie, typed up a resume. And, of course, my resume wasn't terribly strong at that point. It was paper boy. Uh, return missionary, um, taught, at, taught at the MTC. That was about all I could put on my resume. Oh, Eagle Scout. You know, that was about all I could put on my resume to impress him. And, and so I went back, and I was all dressed up, and I, and, I, and I gave him my resume, and he said, you know, I'm sorry, I'm just not hiring. And I'm like, darn, rejected again. So I, I went home, and I was thinking and thinking, and I thought, I, I need the Lord's help on this. And so I made it a purpose of fasting and prayer. And asked the Lord to help me get the job at this dealership so I could get into the business that I wanted to be in. So I put my suit and tie back on. I tweaked my, I tweaked my resume a little bit. Instead of paper boy, I put newspaper distribution. I thought that sounded a little more impressive. So I go back in and, uh, and I said, look, I really want to be in this business. And I really want to work for you. And I'll work harder than anybody's ever worked for you. Just hire me. Give me a chance. And he said, I'm sorry. I'm just not hiring and, and I just, I felt so rejected. I thought, man, a resume tie. And I don't put a tie on very often. And, uh, and, and I, you know, I, I, I asked for the Lord to help me. And I didn't get the job. And I'll never forget driving about a block away to McDonald's for some comfort food. And, and, I, and I, I love McDonald's pancakes. Spence will tell you. We go there all the time for pancakes. And I'll never forget sitting there over my plate of pancakes, just feeling rejected. And uh, I went home to our little one-bedroom apartment, which was about this far below the poverty level that we could barely afford. And uh, I was alone. My wife was gone. And, I, and I, you know, I just asked the Lord, help me. Help me understand. How come I didn't get the job? And what have I got to do to get the job? And, and I remember a very distinct answer to my prayer. And it was simply, not yet. Not yet. I, okay, not yet. Timing's not right. Maybe that's not the place I'm supposed to be. I know the Lord will help me. I know he'll guide me and direct me, and I'll end up at the right place doing the right thing. So I went back, though, again, and, and I said, hey, I want to get in this business. Help me figure out what to do, who to talk to, how to get into this business. And, and he said, you know what? There used to be a guy that owned a boat dealership here in town. He sold it, and he's developing a, a, le a marina out on Utah Lake. How many of you have been to Utah Lake? Beautiful, scenic, 
That's why we call it Mud Lake, right? Okay. And, and he said, why don't you go out and ask him? I'll bet he's looking to hire some people. So I did. And he gave me a job pumping gas at the docks that summer. And as I was out there that summer, a lot of the boat dealers came out there to demo their boats. And I got to know one dealer in particular who was up in Salt Lake. And he was the Cobalt boat dealer. I didn't fully understand what Cobalt was, but I came to understand that Cobalt boats were the benchmark, the highest quality boat in the industry. And at the end of the summer, he said, hey, what are you doing next year? I said, nothing, just, you know, just going to school, working. And he said, well, why don't you come work for me? And I was like, sweet, that'd be awesome. I'd love to come work for you. And so I did. I went to work for, I went to work for this dealership, and, uh, and I got to know how great Cobalt boats were. I got to go to the factory, and I got to meet all the people. And, and I remember coming out of that factory going, if I'm going to be in the boat business the rest of my life, I'm going to have a relationship with this company because the people and the product is phenomenal. And that's the company I'm going to do business with. Well, after about two years of working for this dealership, uh, I had a little bit of a disappointment. Um, the owner called me in for a little interview, a little meeting. And I was a little concerned because in two years, I'd never had an interview or a meeting with him. And I thought, you ain't firing me because I know I've been working hard. And he calls me and he says, uh, we're, we're out of business. I, I only have enough money to pay you through the end of the week. And thanks, but I'm closing my doors. And I was like, wow, OK. But where one door closes, another door opens. And I knew, I knew that the Lord was guiding and directing me. Well, I went home, I told my wife. And we kind of knew that they were struggling. And we decided that now's as good a time as any to go out on our own, to start our own dealership. Now, we didn't have a lot of money, and we didn't have the ability to go get new boats. But with the help of a really good friend, we went out, we borrowed a little bit of money, and we started Taylor's Boats. Now, I want to teach you, another, I want to kind of jump ahead and teach you a really important principle right here. We didn't have any money. We lived in a one-bedroom, a two-bedroom basement apartment of one of our neighbors. This is, we'd moved up to Salt Lake. Um, we had our third child, Spencer, on the way. And we, I, could, I, I tell you, I could not rub two nickels together. But I had absolutely no debt. No big house payment, no car payment, no RC Willie credit card, no credit card debt. I had no debt at all. Now, when this company went out of business, had I had house payment, car payments, credit cards, if I'd have had debt, I would not have been able to take advantage of the opportunity to start my own company. I would not have been able to because I would have had to go to work the next day to make sure that I had a paycheck coming. But because we were running really, really lean and mean and had no debt, we were able to take advantage of our position and start a company. And, and we did. We borrowed a little bit of money. And, uh, and, and we started Taylor's Boats. And, and with the help of a couple of really great people, Taylor's Boats is what it is today. Don't go into debt. Do not do it. I believe that the majority of the problems that we're facing in the economy today, in the financial institutions, in the housing market, in all the things that are causing us problems today, it is because people wanted too much and went too deep into debt for it. Uh, you look at all these financial institutions, they are too deep in debt. And look at, what, look at the result of the economy. You will find that if you are deep in debt, you will have to pass up on a lot of great opportunities as you try to go out and pursue things like, like we did. So anyway, to continue my story. So we went out on our own. And things were cranking along pretty good. And, but I, I wasn't in new boats. And I wanted to be the cobalt dealer so bad. And I, every time I'd go to the boat show, I'd go to the factory rep and I'd say, one of these days, I'm going to be your, boat, I'm gonna be your dealer in Salt Lake. And he was all like, yeah, yeah, whatever, get out of here, don't bother me, kid. And, uh, and so after about two years, our little business was moving right along, and I got a phone call from Cobalt. And they said, we're not happy with the relationship that we have in Salt Lake. Would you like to come and be the Cobalt dealer? And I'm like, how fast do you want me on an airplane to the factory? So they invited me out to the factory, and they're trying to give me the sales pitch, right? Oh, look at the great boat we built, look at the great people, and you really should be our dealer, and I'm... And I'm all, you don't need to give me a sales pitch. Just give me an order for them. Let's write up some boats. So we did. We sat down and we ordered up some boats. And uh, we had our first truckload of boats on the way. So I got home and I told my wife, guess what? We're the Cobalt boat dealer. And she said, that's great. And I said, guess what? I ordered a truckload of boats and they'll be here in about 30 days. And she said, that's great. And I said, guess what? She said, what? And I said, I have no idea how I'm going to pay for them. And I didn't. I had no idea how I was going to come up with the money to pay for a truckload of boats. And uh, so anyway, we went to work. 
and, and we were able to come up with the financing for those boats. And that was, that was, kind, of the be, that was kind of the beginning. Um, let's see. Looks like I skipped a page here. Dream big. Dream huge. If, if I can do it, so can you guys. Now, now I want to tell you two more, two more experiences real quick. In the growth and maturity phase of your company, being a business owner is the hardest thing you will ever do. Ever. Ever. It is hard. It is difficult. There will be times where you'll be working around the clock. You'll work to the edge of exhaustion. You'll have 24 hours before payrolls due, and you'll have no idea how you're going to come up with that payroll. And you'll face challenges like we're facing right here, right now in the economy. Gas that goes to $4.15 a gallon in the middle of the busiest part of our season. And I want to tell you about an experience we had back in 2000, 2001. In 2000, the economy started to really soften. And in 2001, we were going even closer and closer to recession. The boat business, obviously, is very affected by the economy. And not only that, but in Utah, we were in our seventh year of drought. Lake Powell had gone from full pool down 150 feet. And a lot of the other reservoirs were really, really low. And, of course, the media blew that totally out of proportion. They made it sound like you weren't going to have water coming out of your faucet next week. It was so bad. So that really hurt us. Then 9-11. We're about to celebrate that anniversary again. And our business turned off like a switch. Phones quit ringing. Customers quit coming in. And I thought, oh, my goodness. I am done. I am, I am out of business. I can't survive this. I, I'm a struggling little company. This is going to be impossible to get through. And so we had, like, the perfect storm. The, it, that, that, those 9-11 attacks pushed our, our nation right into a recession. A month later, we were at war. And the next spring, we were at war again. Or no, that was two years later. It, it just got uglier and uglier and uglier. And I'll never forget being scared to death. Because after about a month, after 9-11, nothing was getting better. And, and I was at the point where I believed I was counting the days till I was going to be out of business. It may have been down to minutes. But it was getting that close. And I didn't know what to do. And I thought, I'm going to lose my business that I've worked so hard for. I'm going to lose my house. I'm going to lose my savings. I'm going to lose everything. And, and even harder than that, I was, going to, I was going to put 15 families out of business. And all those other people that I did business with that relied on business for me, I was going to put them out of business and hurt them. Not Maybe not out of business, but hurt them. And that just weighed on me so heavy. And I was scared. And, and I'll never forget going to the temple and just praying and fasting just trying to get some direction and some help. And I remember one night as things were getting really, really bad, I kept trying to go and lay down and go to sleep. And I just, I was, I was getting physically ill and I couldn't even sleep. And, and I prayed all night long because I couldn't sleep. And I didn't receive revelations and visions and angels. None of that happened. But a simple piece of inspiration came to me, and it was a name, just a name. And I thought, okay, good customer of mine, successful business owner. And the next day I called him and I said, hey, it's, it's ugly and it's bad and I don't know what to do. I, I don't know what to do. Can, can you help me? And he said, Taylor, been there, done that. Get all your stuff together and let's sit down and let me help you. Now, he didn't give me lots of money, and sales didn't increase. In fact, sales got worse. But he gave me some really great direction and some, and some mentoring and, and some good ideas. And, and because of that, we were able, I was able to see the light. I was, I was able to find some direction. And we were able to get on a path. And we were able to survive that. 2002, to date, became our most, not, not now, but to that day, that, our revenue shrunk. But that was our most profitable year ever because we learned how to better run our company. We saw things that would help us be more efficient, more profitable. And, and I am grateful for that year because that, I learned more that year in the toughest year of my life th than I did in the good years. We're going through the same thing again this year. It is really hard. And if they'll have me back next year, maybe I'll have a story to tell you about this year. Fortunately, we're, we're doing, we, we are doing well. But we're learning more this year than we have in the last six years because it's a tough year. And, and we're being taught a lot. You learn more from opposition and challenges and trials than you ever learn from prosperity. So challenges and trials 
are great. And if you'll trust in the Lord, and if you'll look to the Lord to help you through them, like he taught Nephi great things, he will teach you great things and guide you and direct you and help you. Now, it doesn't just come easily. It comes through really, really hard work. I, I want to share one more, one more thing with you. But before I do, I kind of, in a way, want to bear my testimony to you. I know that if you'll involve the Lord in everything you do, and you'll exercise faith, you will see miracles and direction and guidance throughout your life in everything you do, family, church, business, hobbies, whatever it is you pursue. Heavenly Father will help you and bless you with unbelievable miracles if you'll exercise your faith in Him. I challenge you to do that in school right now with your homework, with your classes, with finding your direction and your path and your goal and your dream. Make the Lord your partner and He will do amazing things for you. I promise you that. Now I want to tell you about one other experience I had. Do not underestimate yourself and your abilities and your talents and what you and the Lord can do together and, and what a team of great people can do together. So... Boating Industry Magazine called me two years ago, and they said, Taylor, we have listed Taylor's boats into the top 100 boat dealers in North America. I was like, you're kidding. Top 100? That is awesome. That is so cool. I don't know how many boat dealers there are in North America, 5,000, 7,000, 10,000. There's a lot. There's an awful lot. And I was like, top 100. That is awesome. We made the top 100. I was so excited. And, and so they said, now what we, we're going to do is we're going to have you come down to the Marine Dealers Convention. We're going to invite you to this dinner, and the countdown from 100 will start. And that's when you'll find out where you are in the top 100. I was like, sweet, this is great. So I got my, my core people together, and we, we, drove to the con we flew down to the convention, and, and we're all sitting around the table, and of course we've been talking. So where do you think we're going to be ranked? And, and I said, I don't care where I'm ranked. I'm just happy to be in the top 100. The only thing I hope is that I'm not 100 or 99 because that would be pretty anticlimactic. But uh, so we get in there and we're sitting at the dinner and they start the countdown. And I'm really thinking 75, 76. That's kind of what I was thinking. And uh, so they start the countdown. I wasn't 100 and I wasn't 99. Whew, okay, that's good. And 90s, 80s, got into the 70s. I'm thinking, okay, here it comes, 79, 78, 76. Or 77, 76, got through the 70s. We were in the 70s. I'm like, sweet, we're better than I thought. Got through the 60s. And I'm like, wow, that's cool. Started into the 50s. And I thought, you know how awesome that would be to be in the top 50? That would be beyond my wildest dreams. Get into the 50s. Get into the 40s. I'm like, all right, they forgot about us. Somehow they dropped us out. What, what's the deal? They just forgot. And they kept going through the 40s. And, and they got through the 30s. And I'm like, I could be in the top 25. That'd be awesome. 25, 24, 20. Got down to the teens. And I'm like, okay, they definitely forgot about us. Got down to 15. And I'm thinking, this, this is awesome. And, and 14, 13, 12. I'm 11. Taylor's Boats was the number one, number 11th ranked boat leadership in North America for 2006. I was, I was, thank you. I appreciate that. I was blown away. I was blown away. Talk about underestimating what, what we had done. Again, collectively as a team, what we had done. I was blown away. We were just jumping up and down and we were, we were, we were thrilled to death. So last year, Boating Industry Magazine calls me, and they said, we put you in the top 100 again. I'm like, oh, whew, sweet, I made it again. Good. You never know, right? And I'm thinking, God, it would be really disappointing if I was 75 this year after being 11. And, and uh, you know, being 11, that's kind of pressure. What if, we, what if we're not 11 again? That'd be, that'd be a that'd stink. So we go down to the convention, go to the dinner, start at 100, got past 199, whew, Got down through the 70s, and I was like, okay, I'm not 75, 76 again. Got through the 60s, got through the 50s, made the top 50. I was glad about that. Still sitting on the edge of my chair. Got through the 40s, got through the 30s, got through the 20s, got down to number 11. It wasn't us. 
And I thought, we made the top ten. And I thought, if I can make the top ten, I will just feel like I have made it. And after 11, they took a break. (laughs) And I said, okay, we're going to take a break, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to announce the top ten. So we went and used the restroom, and we're all talking. What do you think? Gosh, isn't this awesome? We're in the top ten. This is so cool. And so we start the countdown. Ten. Nine. You're sitting on the edge of your chair. Eight. Seven. It's not us. Six. We were the number sixth ranked boat dealer in North America for 2007. Or for... Now, again, I take very little credit because I got the network behind me. I take very little credit for this. But don't underestimate yourself. Dream huge. Dream big. I promise you, you can do things that will be, if I can do it, you guys can do it. You will be able to do things that are far beyond your imagination. And don't ever, ever, ever limit yourself. Don't ever underestimate yourself. Swing for the fences. You've heard all the cliches. Swing for the fences. Shoot for the stars. You can do it. I promise you that. And you can do it with the Lord's help. Thank you. Good luck to all of you in whatever you do.